Let me read a passage of scripture to you in Zechariah. Zechariah is a prophetic voice that was thousands of years before even Yeshua stepped out of heaven and into the, and into the earth. And Zechariah says, rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout in triumph, daughter Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, humble, and riding on a donkey on a coat, the foal of a donkey. Who is that? That's Jesus. That's a description of Jesus before Jesus came through Mary. Now, I just want to encourage you in this, that, that with God, everything is sealed and settled. Don't, don't allow yourself to go through a, a momentary experience that's difficult or a challenge, and now you give up. As though God has lost his, his left to throne and, or doesn't have the power to fulfill the desire that he has given you or the promise that he has establish. He is the faithful God and he will always do everything he's called to do. He says, I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The bow of war will be removed and he will proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion will extend from sea to sea from the Euphrates River to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of your covenant, because of the, the promise that God has made for you. This is, this is your word. Because of the covenant, that, the blood of the covenant, I will release your prisoners from the waterless cistern. Return to a stronghold, you prisoners who have hope. Today I declare that I will restore Somebody say that with me. Double. Double to you. The faithfulness of God is, is not caught in a time zone years away. That faithfulness is on display here and now. The miracles that were evident in Yeshua's life are evident here. You haven't seen them all yet, but you will see extraordinary things from the living God because he's the faithful king. And uh, at that time when all those things begin to break out, you'll make like you knew it. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. I knew it was... I could, could feel the presence of God. A movement in the spirit was coming, sweeping through the Northwest. You'll make like you knew it, but you don't. Because the reality of it is this. If we knew it would come, our behaviors would be so much different. The way we worship, the people we engage, the ones we draw into the experience with the king, it would be dramatically different. And it will be different because God's going to finish what he starts. When Zechariah prophesied this thousands of years in the past and Yeshua steps into it, it's an amazing thing for the disciples to experience it. John chapter 12, verse 12, it says, the next day when the large crowd had come to the festival, heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him. They kept shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the character and authority of the Lord, the King of Israel. A palm branch was kind of a symbol that they used to um, demonstrate high praise or exaltation. So they would take palm branches. That's not what we do now. Now we clap or shout or whatever it is to that you go someplace. People in Seattle during the football, they wear their 12th man jersey. And it's some 
it's an exaltation piece. But back in those days, it was palm branches. So they came and they brought palm branches and they would wave the branch and sing and rejoice. And Jesus was coming in. And, and here's the reality of it. The disciples were in the middle of it and they didn't even recognize it. And I'm just telling you, you can be right in the middle of a miracle. Supernatural things and not even realize it. And I'm just going to prophesy that you are. You just can't see it yet. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And Jesus found, verse 14, a young donkey and sat on it, just at, as it is written, do not be afraid, daughter Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's coat. Now, that was the word of Zechariah. His disciples do not understand these things at first. However, when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about them and that they had done these things to him. Meanwhile, the crowd which had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. Let's park for a second. Um, I, I, I want to I walk you through a few things in these next four days. Um, today, Palm Sunday, then on Wednesday, we'll have communion together, then Good Friday, and then um, Resurrection Sunday, a week from today. This is kind of a holy week for us, and we're focused and locked in on the things of God. But I want you to understand that <clears throat> what God has done in the past, he's doing again. And uh, there were lots of people during the time where Jesus was um, healing the sick and driving out devils and, and restoring the lost and, and going to die on the cross, but then three days later stepped back up into his life and then give away an eternal life for everybody who wanted it. That hadn't changed. But you're going to see a movement, a, a spirit of it. Now, you, you have to kind of catch yourself up in, so that you don't get caught up in the day-to-day -day of nothingness. That you miss it. These guys are going around, they're talking, about, Lazarus is a great example, and they're talking about Lazarus. And so the, because Jesus raised him from the dead. And the reason he raised him from the dead is so that there would be a witness there so that these people would know it's not just business as usual. They would see Lazarus. Oh, man, I'm not even sure that's even true. Then they would see Lazarus. Then they go to the grocery store. Ah, I heard this thing about Jesus. Then they see Lazarus. And then they were like, Goldman. They get in the car and they drive through the Bank of America ATM and then they see Lazarus. Who's the teller? And they're going, that's the dude. I, I'm going to encourage you that you need to, uh, in your world, find your Lazarus. Because the hand of God is reaching into your environment and desiring to do extraordinary things. But if you keep sitting in the back seat, you'll never be able to drive. Sit in the front, man. Get in the front seat and drive this thing. I don't even know how to drive. Don't worry about it. He'll help you. You got these self-driving vehicles now. You, you'll make it. So the, the testimony of, of Jesus is being spread I'm going to encourage you to spread your testimony. Tell your story. Uh, share it with somebody that you don't know. Go to the grocery store or, or the local Starbucks and, and buy somebody a cup of coffee and begin to engage and talk to them. Build relationship. Come on, you can't stay in your box, in your environment, and, in, and, and comfortable in that. When God really has chosen this moment to do extraordinary things. If you're going to look back on it and say, wow, if I had known back then, I would have. Well, you know now. 
So take advantage of, of what you have now. Pray now. Lay your hands on the sick now. Speak healing now. Rejoice now. Sing praise now. If you're going to do it then, do it now. And watch the Spirit of God manifest extraordinary things. Verse 18 says, this is also why the crowd met him, because they heard he had done the sign. And then the Pharisees said to one another, you see, you've accomplished nothing. Look, the whole the world has gone after him. Jesus is unstoppable. Are you? If Jesus is unstoppable and you're in Jesus, here's my question to you. Are you? I mean, I'm, it's, not a, it's not really, it's not rhetorical. It's not really even a question for me to answer. I know who I am. Are you unstoppable? If your life is hidden in Jesus and Jesus is in you, you should be like him. So the reality of, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna challenge you a little bit today is that you don't try to be like Jesus any longer. You're not really designed to be like Jesus. You're designed to be Jesus. Well, I'm not Jesus. Yeah, you are. Because we are the body of Christ. Jesus is the head, and we are his body. So in essence, we are Jesus. Now, you may not feel qualified to be Jesus because of the evaluation of your life through the mirror, through the experience. And you're thinking, man, I'm just so messed up in my personal life. There's no way I can even approximate being like Jesus. But the design of God is for you to be like Jesus. So when somebody sees you, they don't see you. They see Jesus. They don't hear your voice. They hear Jesus. And so when the disciples came back from going out that Jesus sent them two by two, they, were, they came back and their first mission was, Woo! Jesus! Even the devils are subject to us in your authority. We're just like you! Yeah. Are you ready for that? Three of us. Okay, well, good. We'll go with the three, Jesus. Come on, man. I'm warming you up some. God has an unstoppable place for you. You're going to have to step out of the boat, Peter, and walk on the water. Do it spiritually. Be unstoppable spiritually. Get in the word. Pray. Uh, believe the word. Act on it. Come on. Get out of your comfort zone spiritually. Oh, and this is comfortable. It's nice here. I got a nice seat. And this feels good. And my parking place is great. And I just love, I'm warm and comfy. And the Lord says, I don't care about your comfort. I got a thousand people that, that are walking in the darkness and you are the light. I'm not going to let you be comfortable in your dim light. Mm. He's the way emotionally. We got a whole nation that are, is afraid. A nation that's messed up. You know, our, our culture now, it used to be a time where you were evaluated on what you, what you did. Where you went, the actions, the behaviors. It's shifted now. Now, it's no longer what you do. It's how you make somebody feel. 
So it's no longer evaluating who you are and what you do. It's how you make somebody feel. When you just, I was just, I was, I was afraid, and I, I wasn't quite sure. And that guy made me feel bad, and he looked at me, and I just felt so bad. When he looked, I just turned out short. It's not about it's not about your actions any longer. It's feelings. And the whole world is driven by emotion and feeling. Listen, you're not going to lead by being in an emotional state of despair. Or your word is full of anxiety and uncertainty. And I don't know if I'm going to make it. He's unstoppable. And he lives in you. How could you say you don't know if you're going to make it? How could you even entertain a feeling that is so counter to the things of God when you are the vessel he has chosen? I'm just saying. You're going to lead, lead with love, and lead with strength. Be unstoppable physically. There's going to be challenges. Be unstoppable. There's going to be things that come against you. Be unstoppable. It's going to be physical challenges. Be unstoppable. Come on. Take the word of God and command it. Speak to it. Get the heart of Yeshua by spending time into his presence. And then when you catch his heart, go, go speak that into existence, right? And watch the God do extraordinary things for you. I want to take a picture of you. I'm hoping that the Lord will allow us to take a pictures of who we are in this moment today. What is, it, what is the day? 10th? April the 10th? April the 20th? What year is this? 2022? April the 10th? 2022. Father, take a snapshot of your sons and daughters so that we can see it. That's what happened to the disciples. They didn't realize that God had used them to do something prophetically that was ushered a thousand years in the, in the past. And they were the guys who, was, who had read that scripture many times, but never had applied themselves to that experience until they did it. And they didn't even realize they were doing it when they were doing it. They didn't realize till after it was done and they were writing the memoirs and then they said, oh, wait, are you kidding me? We did it. We did that. That's what's going to happen to you. Amen. It's just going to be business as usual and you're going to be driving as normal and something's going to pull over and stop and there's going to be a shift, a change in the atmosphere because Jesus is unstoppable and so are you. Spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially. It's a shift in the financial markets. We know you're watching it. You're seeing it happen. You understand what's going on. But you haven't applied yourself to that shift. You've applied yourself in your own mind to get by. I'm just trying to make it, man. I'm just trying to get by. Why are you trying to get by when the spirit of the living God dwells in you? If, you're, if there's going to be a financial king, why not you? Why not? Why not God touch you? Why not God elevate you? Why don't stupid money sit in your house? Come on. Such a small thing to the great king. And this is a season that re will need resources to advance the work that God has for us to do. I praise God for the widow's mites. But the resources that David gathered through his years of conquest advanced the kingdom. 
This is a season, a time that God marks his sons and daughters to advance the kingdom by releasing in them finances and resources that they've never had before. Are you ready for that? Amen. Amen. Be Jesus. Be his body so he uses you. Be his, be his heart so that you think like he thinks. Be his love. So we're caring for people that no one else really cares for. James chapter 3, James says this, with the tongue we bless our Lord and Father and with it we curse people who made who were made in God's image and likeness blessing and cursing come out of the same mouth my brothers and sisters these things should not be this way what is James doing he's just he's just sharpening us a little bit making us fit for the assignment God has given us. God's going to give you high honor. He gives honor to whom honor is due. So he's, he's sharpening us a little bit right now so that we're due the honor. So that we qualify to step into the, wear the shoes that God's called us to wear. And go to the places God's called us to go. And to, and to experience the things God has called us to experience. I remember for me sometimes, as, and you know, I'm wearing the shoes too. And the, and the Lord called me into the ministry, and I was like, whoa, I am so completely unqualified for this. I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm not even a good guy. <laughs> you got to be a really good guy, Lord, to, to wear the shoes that these guys wear, and I'm not. You know, I've, I've, I've played ball, I've said some things, and gone some places, and done some things, and, and so I don't qualify. And the Lord says, who qualifies? Do you qualify or do I qualify? And I said, okay. You qualify, God. He said, stop looking at yourself like a man. And allow me to show you, you, to you. Now, I'm just telling you. Sometimes you're shaving in the mirror and you're thinking... And I'm kind of messed up. And you probably are. But that doesn't stop him. He's the great God. He's the miracle worker. And he's made you unstoppable. Live like him. Talk like him. Act like him. Does a spring, verse 11... Pour out sweet and bitter water from the same opening? Can a fig tree produce olives, my brothers and sisters, or a grapevine produce figs? What does a grapevine produce? Grapes. Grapes. Neither can a salt water spring yield fresh water. Who among you is wise and understanding? By his good conduct, He should show that his works are done in the gentleness that comes from wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, don't boast and deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from above, but is earthy, unspiritual, demonic. There is, a, there is a natural realm wisdom. Here's, I'm, I'm cleaning up a little bit. It's a natural realm wisdom that's, that doesn't belong in the body of Christ and it's not in us. This is not the way we live. This is not the way we give. This is not the way we serve. We're not earthy, unspiritual, and demonic. The kind of music that we listen to the kind of shows, the kind of verbiage, the kind of relationships, the kind of impact you're having is not earthy, unspiritual, demonic. It's not our way. Now, it might have been your way as you got out of the car this morning. 
but it's not your way any longer. God is cleaning up some stuff and changing our hearts, moving some things around and strengthening you financially, strengthening you emotionally so that you're not a wreck and over somebody to your right or to your life might be afraid and fearful and scared, but you're bold as a lion because Jesus is in you and you're in Jesus which makes you unstoppable. And so you start to draw things into your atmosphere that strengthen you so that you grow stronger and stronger and stronger. So the things that are miracles that you've read now are miracles that you do. unbelievable things because that's God's way. So if I'm going to practice doing things right and doing things God's way, I can't practice doing things wrong that are evil. I got to do it God's way. Can somebody say amen to that? For the Where there is envy and selfish ambition, there is disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom from above is first, let's watch these, is first pure. God's wisdom that comes from the king of kings is a pure wisdom. And he'll speak to you in ways that are pure and holy. God's not a liar, he's not a manipulator, He's not a deceiver. His heart is pure. And he will move purity through you. Now, here's what I've come to understand too. If you got a lot of dirt in a garment and you put the garment in the wash machine and you put some detergent in the, in the uh, wash machine so that it washes the garment, it, it's, it's got dirt in it. And so it has to take the dirt out of the garment. The garment is not going to be instantly clean. It's going to be dirty. But it's not going to stay dirty. So listen to me. We're born again. The Spirit of God is in us. We are God's servants. And you might be a little dirty. He's going to wash you and make you clean. And you may not like the process, but he doesn't really care. Because his objective is to make you clean. His objective is to make your name great. His objective is to use you in a powerful way that you've never been used before. His objective is for you to testify to the majesty of King Jesus. He's going to change your heart and restore things in your relationships. And things that you think are never going to happen will happen because he's unstoppable and he lives in you. If you've lived the life down here, he's pulling you up to a higher place. You may be saying in your heart, I can't do it. It's okay. He doesn't really listen to what you're saying. (laughs) He's interested in taking you to a higher place. And we're going on the journey together. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peace-loving, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering, without pretense, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who cultivate, help me church, peace. 
Jesus is the peace speaker. So start cultivating the things that are Yeshua's in your atmosphere, in your life. There's a lot of conflict at the house, speak peace. There's a lot of poverty in your house, speak abundance. And then live your life in accord to that by giving and serving and blessing and honoring. There's times that, that you should be silent because what you're going to say is something contrary. And so may God give you a check in your heart so that you learn how to shut up. Because there's just some times, man, that you just need to shut up. You don't particularly feel good or your enemy's pressing your buttons and somebody said some stuff or your kids don't pick up their clothes and there's junk every place and you want to say, are you? You should know what you should say? Nothing. You should shut up. Or you should say, this is a great opportunity for me to go to work. <laughs> and you'll find out that the Lord will help you. And he'll open up another door. And something that you've never been able to do, you can do now. A place you've never been able to go, you can go now. That's right. I mean, just because he's a faithful God. And then somebody comes up to you and says, lucky but you know in your heart it's favor from doing it God's way. He's starting a new thing that has never been done in our world. I'm going to say that again so you catch it. He's starting a new thing that has never been done in our world. It's not like it's never been done. It's not like the sick has never been healed or the dead have never been raised or the lost have never been saved. But he's doing a new thing for us in our world. So you should get in. You should get into that. You should say, all this other junk, I'm not, I don't care about it any longer. I'm just going to walk with God and do it his way. Right. Let me close with this. Um, John chapter, verse 20 says, some Greeks were among those who went up to worship at the festival and they came to Philip who was from Basadia in Galilee and requested of him, sir, we want to see Jesus. Jesus wasn't accessible in those days as he is today. And Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Got some guys who want to meet with you, Jesus, some Greeks, influential can we meet with you? And Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains by itself. But if it dies, can you say if it dies? If it dies. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. It's a season that God's trying to kill you. He wants you to die so that you can live. Some of the things that you've fallen in love with are not worthy of who you are. Not worthy of your time and your effort and your energy. That if you can refocus your perspective and lock your heart in on the things of God, then you're going to produce a lot of good fruit. You're going to have a trail of effectiveness in your life, and in your ministry, and in your family, and in your health, and in your finances, in your relationships, unbelievable stuff. The one who loves his, his life will lose it, and the one who hates his life in this world will keep it forever. For eternal life. 
If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there my servant also will be. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now my soul is troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour? <laughs> but that is why I came to this hour. This is the reason we are gathered here together is to walk with God, to do extraordinary things in his name, to be just like him. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the great one. There's no one like you. Be magnificent, God. Show yourself mighty and make your sons and daughters like you unstoppable. We are devoted to doing things your way. We rejoice in you, Jesus, as King of kings and Lord of lords. And we thank you that you have made us part of the body of Christ, that we are like you. We break all fear and doubts, all the lies and manipulation, all the deceit and the trickery, the schemes. We break uh, the heartache and the hopelessness. It has no bearing in our life any longer, Father. It has no bearing in your kingdom. We pray for those who are despondent and in despair that cannot help themselves. Give us the ability to help them and the opportunity to demonstrate that help. We will not be slothful nor lazy, but fervent to do the will that you've called us to do, your will, your way. Demonstrate your glory, God, and manifest your power through your sons and daughters. And even though we may just be bakers, make our names great in your sight. Glorify your name, Lord Jesus. Glorify your name. If you surrender yourself to that, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. I'm going to surrender myself to the, for God to use me as he chooses. I'm going to surrender myself to that. Thank you for the honor that comes from serving you, Jesus. We rely on it because we rely on you. Make us like you, Jesus, unstoppable. Could you say this with me? I embrace the spirit of the Lord that makes me unstoppable. like you, Jesus. Just like you, Jesus. Just like you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I ask that you release the wisdom of God in us. It's pure and peaceable and loving and gentle and compliant full of mercy and good fruit, unwavering, without pretense. This fruit that is sown in peace, God, help us to cultivate it, to develop it in peace so that everything in our world grows wonderfully and beautifully and we are a reflection of you. 